Welcome everyone to my comment guide video. Uh, it's taken a bit, but it's finally here. I want to make it concise because uh, before this I, I made a video portion and it was 40 minutes. I'm going to bring that down to like 15. So let's get started. All right. The first question comes from Tic Tac. Do you know if Torbjorn's turret can get damage boosted? All right, so for this, yes, it can, but only in one instance. Turret is essentially kind of considered its own character. I think that's an easy way to describe it. And due to this, um, it's not able to be targeted by your allies at all. So Mercy can't do it. Anna can do it. Uh, there's another one I get. Well, I guess Bongo. Bongo kind of targets allies. So none of those will affect the turret. Whatever Blizzard did in the code made it so it can happen. But Baptisolt actually is um, something that does work. So turret can fire through Baptisolt and boom, it gets damage boosted. So I think I've answered this question before, but I'll answer it again. Do you know if Torbjorn's ultimate damage can be damage boosted by a Mercy Nano Bongo? The answer is no, but kind of. The Torbjorn ult has two forms. It has this projectile form in the air, and then it has this goopy gooey form on the ground. It's a little... This always reminds me of that. So... Yeah. So, um... Essentially, the projectile form can get damage boosted. What this does is, when it hits an enemy directly, it'll do about 5 damage. And you can up that to 10. But it'll bounce off the enemy and then land on the ground and turn into our goodness goo, whatever you want to call it, kum, that we know and love. That does not get damage boosted. At all. So, there you go. How much disadvantage does Torb have on attacking runs? I honestly say none. I think it is more advantageous for Torbjorn to play an attack. Torbjorn is a snowball hero, and if you don't know what that is, essentially it's the concept of, you know, you roll a snowball and it gets bigger and bigger, and then eventually it gets out of control. So, um, attack is generally a, uh, a pick focus thingy. It's it's very pick fo focused, where if the offense gets a single pick, they're at a huge advantage compared to the defense. The defense is more about surviving and just wasting the timer at the top, while offense is more about getting picks and um, area denial and pushing them back. Which Torpern is very nice with. He's very good at area denial and pushing people into corners and stopping them from getting picks. He's also a really good character for um, combination ults, and combination ults are far stronger on offense than they are on defense. These combination ults can wipe an entire team, push them all the way back to their spawn, then you get the um, the new attacking area, which is, you know, the payload or the point. You have all of your stuff set up, and they have to come through this tiny little choke commonly, and you're at a very, very good position. I would say the same thing kind of goes for Koth. Once you initially actually like get the point, you are really, really good and almost unstoppable. But the, the only downside is really like the getting the point part. It just takes a little bit longer. It's a little bit harder because he's not a character that can just one tap someone. You do have a little bit of setup time. For this, I'm really sad to say, I don't have a sneaky turret spot. I don't really use them too often, if ever. Because most of the time, if it's sneaky, that means no one can see it, which means that it can't see anyone else. And if they do see it, it's such a weak uh, ability. It doesn't have enough health, it doesn't really do enough damage um, quickly to be sneaky. So, there are some spots that I can show, like, up here that are kind of cool. They're close to sneaky, 
Um, they're just more interesting spots, so here are some of those. Just gonna hold my hands like this while I show them off. Now this question, there's a lot of this question. I'm gonna boil it down to, is shotgun viable? Um, how do you feel about the shotgun buffs? And this is just an all-encompassing shotgun question. So let's begin. First off, shotgun buffs, beautiful. I love it. Anything that increases the consistency of a weapon is far better than simple number changes. The fact that the pattern is a, I can't do a star with my hands. Boom, 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 boom. The fact that it's a star pattern now means, or well, it's always been a star pattern. The fact that it is a consistent, non-rotating star pattern now is really, really good. You can always aim where you want. It's always gonna land where you want it to. It's way better than just random spread. So first off, incredible. Um, second thing. So ah. Uh, this was a question that was asked a little bit. Is the do you use the primary fire or do you use the secondary fire? Is secondary fire better? Uh, primary fire is still always going to be superior. Even though shotgun, the changes are really good. I would say, honestly, just, you can use shotgun within like uh, about five overwatch meters and it will consistently perform better than primary fire. But there are so many disadvantages to the shotgun still, such as fall off damage high spread um the star pattern which can sometimes miss if you aim like at the neck for instance you'll have two bullets sometimes go to the side because it's a star one will hit the head basically um uh, also ammo consumption of shotgun basically still use the primary fire the majority of the time i'm actually gonna probably um look into making a deeper video on the different kind of combinations of shotgun and primary fire techniques that you can do. This on stream, I was experimenting with this to see what is the quickest way I can kill someone, what is the easiest um, way to do this, and what does not consume my ammo the most. Uh, just kill time as well, because sometimes primary fire is gonna be slower than secondary fire. But sometimes secondary fire is going to be slower than primary fire. There's a lot of that. And uh, if I do make another video, which I'm hoping I will, I'm trying to get that. Uh, I will make a video going very in-depth into the Torbjorn uh, weapon techniques. So there's that. Um, basically, yes, shotgun, uh, a lot better now. I would suggest using it within five meters. That is the big takeaway very short range where you can't miss it is efficient it is nice in that range should tor be able to produce armor again honestly i, I used to love torb armor and it's kind of something that brought me to like that connection of tf2 ng to torbjorn it was like oh it's so nice i have this utility which is basically a dispenser it's fun, it's cool, it's interesting, it makes it more unique than just, oh, I got a steroid. Tons of characters get steroids in game, it's kind of like a cop-out ability. Honestly, though, I don't think they should bring it back. Uh, there was a lot of issues with scrap in general, and like, like some of them were, oh, you already won the fight, you're already snowballing, why do you need the armor? You've already won. Like, like it's not getting you anything. And then sometimes, like, oh, you lost the fight, but now there's scrap at their back line. It's just, it's, uh, it doesn't work well in a setting like Overwatch. Because then you know how to throw it at people, and then it's like, oh, well, then you'd have to make it like Brig, where it just attaches to someone. But we already have Brig, who already stole the ability. Point is, if they do anything with Torb, I would really love it if they made more buildings, made the character a more building-oriented character. And a concept that I love is the idea of a dispenser that auto-reloads your ammo which for some characters wouldn't be super useful. But maybe there could also be a dispenser that, I don't know, maybe could do both ammo and cooldowns a little bit. Obviously that would be absurd, but it would be fun. And fun is important in a game.
How do I manage the overload cooldown? Because it feels short, so I want to pretty much use it off cooldown. I feel you, man. I feel you. I'm an aggressive player, and I definitely want to use overload as much as possible. But essentially, you kind of have two, um, two ways you should use it. You should use overload either defensively or decisively. Oh, yeah. So, defensively or decisively. Um, defensively, you'll use it to back out. Say Genji jumps on you. Then overload, backpedal, primary fire. Boom, boom, boom. Or um, in rush type comps where they're just going to run you down. You don't want to be in there. You don't want to be fighting. You want to be backing out as much as possible. Now, the other one is decisively. So, maybe um, your team is pushing in. You want to get a pick, right? So, use it decisively. You're like, okay, there's a Zarya in front of me. Uh, she's about to lose bubble. You pop overload and you shot her down. Or you primary fire at her. Or maybe you're in a duel. No one else is around. You're not going to get ganked by anyone. You want the fight to end. You overload. You get that advantage for that short period of time. It's a very, like, reactive type of ability. And the only way that you yourself can manage it is kind of understand when you're overusing it and hold back a little bit. And it's just a self-control kind of thing that you gotta learn. It's more about realizing the situations you're in that you're using it, and slowing that down if it's unnecessary. If you find that maybe after you used it, and it's like it's 10 seconds later and you still don't have it back, and you're like, man, I really need this right now, kind of calm your usage of it, because you don't really need overload if you're just poking down a choke point. It's fun, but if you do care about being efficient, it's not useful. Ah, this question. I love this question because I hate Zarya. Torb versus Zarya. What is a Torb to do? And also, this is a combo question. Hi from Discord. One main problem I have playing Torb is uh, getting overwhelmed by rush type compositions. I e. Ryan, Lucio, Zarya, Diva. Uh, in what ways is Torb? Can I adapt to this kind of playstyle? Essentially, there's uh, three key things in my mind that you can do. You can kite, you can distance yourself, and you can group up. These type of compositions prey very heavily on the solo soldier being all the way over here, away from their team, because they just dive them. There is no way you're going to get out of that life doesn't matter you could overload you could backpedal and you're gonna die multiple people focusing on you that's a hard death right there you can do some things to prevent it you can play near walls where you can hide you can play near um health packs where you can get extra help you play near your team where they're not going to be able to dive you alone if you do get in a situation because it's unfortunate sometimes they just kind of do it they're really fast you can't tell what's going on they hit the choke and then they immediately go in so what you can do is you can kite them, you overload and backpedal, and while they're chasing you, you're firing at them, you're kiting. Kiting is a kind of mmo -y term for uh, when there's a big boss running at you, and you're backpedaling, you're making sure that you're out of their swinging range. So you're trying to run away as fast as possible, you're kiting them and making space. It's a good thing. But, yeah, the main thing you can really do against a character like Sari, for instance, she's very, very strong. If she has charge and bubble, you cannot pop bubble by yourself in a quick enough time without wasting a lot of ammo. Essentially, you were giving her, like, three seconds of god mode. Y you gotta tell people. You gotta be like, hey, I need help. Zarya on me. Now, go. It it's, it's something that you can't really do alone. Uh, if you do pick your fights properly, you can pick when her bubble cooldown is down. You can uh, pick when a Winston jumps in. He bubbles, he's bobbing and weaving. You just run out of a shoddy. He wasted his escape. On to you. What can he do? So, yeah, hopefully that answers it. So I'm going to give this question a very special section. Because there's a lot here, and I really appreciate it, Hans. But I think I did kind of explain it a little bit with the shotgun in the previous questions. But I just really wanted to know, I appreciate your effort. 
in this post a ton. So thank you very much. But um, so this would require a little bit longer of a video and possibly as I continue with more YouTube content, I'll probably go over more stuff. I do have previous videos. I suggest everyone that cares, check them out. So yeah, thank you. Now, I like this question. Is it worth delaying turret until the fight starts to prevent it from being destroyed by chip damage before the main uh, main fight? I almost always say no. Aggressive aggro turrets before the match even begins, never do. Aggressive turrets in general, almost never good. Turret is too weak, dies too fast, and the area denial that you provide by putting it in a backline protecting your supports or just simply denying like a med pack or something is just gone if you do that. It's on cooldown. Enemies can jump you freely, they can jump your supports freely. It, you don't have a threat now, there's no threat. Half your character is gone. It's kind of like playing Weevil in uh, Metro Prime Hunters. I hope that's the character. That character turns into a half a turret and half a weird robot slicey thing. Now, it's like, you gotta make sure, you gotta kind of think of it as like, turret is another half of you. Would you enjoy being dead most of the game? Would you think, oh, I'm really efficient this way? No. No, you see a Reinhardt, like, waiting at their spawn point, like, oh yeah, I might do some Mimi stuff. But it is funny, but like, he's gonna die really early on. He's gonna be useless for the majority of the game if he keeps going in. Same thing with the turret. Don't put it aggro, you lose value as a threat and area denial tool by doing this. So, this is possibly the final non-meme question of the video. Um, as of right now, is Torp a viable character? And if so, it makes him so. I, so I kind of think of viability in two terms. So viable is um, this character can be played in you can succeed with them. And then there's another one, meta. Meta means this character is exceedingly dominant and they're almost always a want to be picked due to the character's strengths. I would say Torbjorn is viable. I would say you could play him and you could pop off with him. <laughs> um, you could win games with him. He's a viable character in that right. He's not a character that doesn't auto lose. He does good damage, he has good self-survival utility, and he has a really good ultimate for um, combinations. Meta though, I feel like there are always other characters that outshine him in different ways. For instance, he does the same kind of damage as McCree, but McCree is hitscan. This means it's a lot easier to take out Ferris, Echoes, Mercies, any character with intense speed. Uh, and McCree, for instance, like Tracer. like. Yeah, both characters can take out Tracer. You get a Torpad shot onto a Tracer, and then Turret hits her, and then she dies. Where are you, McCree? And you just stuttered, then boom, she's dead. Stun is, I can go anywhere and stun her, while Torp Turret is, I have to hope the turret's alive, I have to get a projectile headshot. It's consistency. Torbjorn is not a very consistent character, which makes him less meta by far. He's less consistent, he doesn't have any utility to essentially help his teammates around him. Like McCree's done, that can be used for pretty much anything. Torb Overload, that's only used for him. So, it's, Torb is very, like, damage heavy. I'm doing damage, this is all I can do. Other characters have utility that they provide, or they just do other things better. So he's viable, but he's not meta in my opinion. He could be meta on a higher level of gameplay, he could be meta on a lower level of gameplay. Different gameplay uh, levels have different things that are meta. Fair Mercy, for instance, is going to be a lot better in a lower elo than a higher elo. And sometimes certain things work in pro play, but that doesn't work in ladder. So there's a lot of different dynamics that are going on, uh, but I've said it already. Viable. Not meta. Alrighty, so... That was the um, the gist of all the serious questions, and there's a lot of meme questions, so this is a more meme section. I appreciate you guys putting the comments, so yeah, let, let's -a go.
first question, why do I play Where's the Storm when I use certain skins? First off, I think it's just a mental game thing, kind of like a placebo, right? Sometimes, maybe it's not your favorite skin or something. Sometimes you just play worse because you don't feel as good doing something. You just mentally, like, weigh yourself down with a little invisible anchor when you're doing something. And, you know, sometimes some skins, like, actually do give advantages versus disadvantages. For instance, Viking on the back of Viking uses a shield, which is a lot slimmer. Versus the Christmas skin, which has giant trees! And it's very big and very noticeable and very colorful. And sometimes, like, my favorite thing to do in Halo was to use the all pink skin. I used to use the all pink skin in Halo 3. That way, everyone knew where I was because I thought it was funny if I killed people and that was like, haha, look at me. You could always tell where I am because I'm pink and bright. And I thought it was funny, but it's a disadvantage. It's just not like there's not any natural environments that are pink. So there you go. So there's a lot of these questions from my good old friend here, Red. I'm not gonna answer any of them. You're a degenerate. Stop it. I'm not I don't know any of these special things about twerk or fetish stuff. I may like the character, I may put an overly uh, insane amount of hours into the character, but I don't like the character that much, you know? I'm, I'm not liking him that much. I'm not there, alright? Mm-mm. That's, that's not me. I can't, I don't, mm. Go look at the wiki. There might be something there. Maybe someone will put something there. Maybe someone will do the math, you know? <laughs> but here's one that I guess I'll entertain a little bit. Why did YouTube delete one of my questions? Did they not appreciate the fact that I was so close to finding out whether or not Torbjorn was a Vorophiliac? What are your thoughts on YouTube's blatant kick shaming in this community? You know, I kind of just had this up before I thought about reading it. Yeah, no, I'm not going to answer. <laughs> Next question. What is the best strat for getting to play the game while I'm dead? So the way play of the game works, at least I think, I never looked into this, is if you target a bunch of people that then die relatively soon with them being damaged by you, you will get play of the game. This is often why Torbjorn gets play of the game while dead, because turret is just like popping off, but it's not really. It's just tapping people that are all dying to your teammates. The best strategy, of course, would be to put a turret on a point, beat your team into dying with you, but have coom out all over the ground so that they step in the coom and like, so this is the idea, right? The idea is the enemy team pushes in, they fight your team, they clash, your team dies, the enemy team is really low, they start stepping on your stuff down there, and then they start getting pelted down by turret, which kills everyone that is low HP, and then you get play of the game easy now all right that's it that's it for the serious questions is it for the meme questions so sorry this took a while um yeah i got work in college and streaming and stuff so youtube takes me a bit i also kind of i'm like ah oh, i made a video and it's hard to do and yeah whatever i'm gonna i'm complaining, I'm complaining. i can complain forever i appreciate you guys a ton thank you for watching um, if I do another video, it will most likely be on Torbjorn Weapon Techs, which is the efficiency of using primary fire versus the efficiency of using shotgun and mix matching them and using them in overload and just a bunch of stuff. So if I do another video, it'll be on that. Uh, thank you guys very much. Remember to subscribe because I learned apparently a lot of people watch YouTube videos, but they don't sub. And I mean, it's not like I post often, so I'm not going to be filling your feed, you know? <laughs> uh, follow my Twitter. Follow my Discord. Wait, join my Discord. Yeah, that's what they do now. Join my Discord. Follow my Twitch stream. That's where I do the majority of everything and anything. And yeah, if you have any personal questions you want to ask, join the Discord. At me in, like, I don't know, Sweden or something. And just ask me a question. Or at me in the Overwatch channel. It's probably better more organized yeah i'm i will try and answer it to my best ability as a human being that is very dumb so yeah
That's it. End of the video. Roll the credits. Boom. Bada. Boom. Kameha. Meha. Uh, yes. Finn. <laughs> Now, now, boys, don't touch that stuff.